This question comes up so often. It's what's the difference between a submix track and a folder track? If we go into Traction Waveform here, you can see I have a folder and a submix. They really look very similar. Let's have a look at what the differences are and why you might use folders over submixes and why you might use submixes over folders. So we'll start with folders. What are they? They're more of an organizational tool. So if you have a bunch of tracks that are taking up space in your mix window here, maybe they're like special effects that just pop up every now and then or once in the song or some claps or something that just happens sporadically. You've got it all set, but they're taking up that valuable space in your mix window. You kind of want them out of the way or maybe you just want to group them together. Well, we can use a folder track to do that. So let's say we want to take track nine here. We can just drag and drop it into the folder. Maybe track eight will go with it. I'm just going to turn that off so you don't see the voice there distracting you. So we'll drop that in there. And we have two tracks in this folder now. And if I click this, they're out of the way. And I could put this folder up at the top here. Maybe I would even go to the set track height and have it as smaller. Now it's really out of our way, but I'm just gonna put it back to the default size. I'll show you another way that we could get rid of this or have it so we don't see it. We can go to our browser here and then you go to tracks. So you wanna make sure you click on tracks and in here, you're going to see your submix and your folders and we can just click on hide and it's going to hide that folder and everything in there. You'll still hear what's being played in those folders, you're just not going to see it. So if you really like a clean mix window and you don't want to see all those tracks, you can just hide them. It's really easy to do. And then you can unhide them just like that. Like I said, these are just really for organizational purposes. So you can throw some things in there. You can even rename the folder if you want. I could call this my folder or percussion or random tracks, whatever you want to call it, you could do that. And we have our folder here. So that's kind of a quick look at folders. Now, how do we create one and how do we get tracks into one? Well, there's a couple ways we can do that. Let's first look at how we can take tracks out of one because I have some tracks in there and I'm going to take them out. So all I have to do is just drag and I'm going to drop it outside of the folder. There, and now our folder is empty. We don't have that little arrow pointing down where we can close it and open it. So I'm gonna delete this folder and we'll look at ways that we can create a new one. So the way that I like to put my tracks into the folder is I'll know what I wanna put in there. So let's say I want eight, nine, and maybe six all in a folder. So I hold down control on my computer keyboard and I click on those and you can see they're all selected now. Then I can just right click on any of them and I'll go to pack selected tracks to a folder track. And now it's created a folder and those tracks are in there. For me, that's the easiest and quickest way to do it. I'll show you another way that we can do this though. So we could just click on this little plus sign here, add folder, we have our folder now, and then you can just drag and drop your tracks in there. Just like that. Very easy to do. And then you can drag them back out. If that's what you want to do. I'm going to put them back in though. All right. And then I'm going to just minimize that folder. Now let's just have a look at this side of our folder and submix. So I have them on top of each other here. This is the folder and you'll notice the folder just has a level so I can increase or decrease the level of all the tracks within that folder if I really wanted to. I can also mute all the tracks or solo all the tracks in that folder. You'll also notice that I don't have, this is our little VU meter, I don't have that on a folder track. And I'll tell you why in a minute, but right now let's have a look at our submix tracks. So here's our submix and the same thing. We can just drag and drop tracks in there, or you can do that same thing as before where we just 
selected multiple tracks, right click, and then this time you would go to pack selected tracks to a submix track. So we'll do that. Now we have two submix tracks. And I'm going to go to submix one here. I'll bring it down. So folder is above it. And the same thing, we can rename these if we want. I'll just call it sub. So I can rename that. And again, we could use this to just organize our tracks, put them out of the way if we wanted. So it's very similar to folders in that sense. And really, you could probably just use submixes and not even worry about folders. But we do have folders, so you can use them if that's what you want to do. So now where things get really different, though, is when we look over here, like I said, with the folder, you just have this level. We can go up and down with the level. With a submix, we have a level. There's also a pan on there, so we can go up, down, level. And you'll also see that there's this VU meter. And that's because with the submix, all of your tracks are routed through it, which means we can also put effects on here. So if I wanted... I could put a nice SSL bus compressor on there, or I'll just put a waveform compressor on there that comes with waveform. And all of the tracks in here will be processed as a group with that compressor. So they're not getting processed individually, they're getting processed as a group. So this is great for drum buses, guitar buses, vocal buses, buses of any sort. If you're used to working in another DAW, then you can think of submixes like the way you would think of a bus in another DAW, or some DAWs call them aux tracks, and then they have buses that are routed internally. That's kind of how waveform works. There are buses that get routed internally. I'll get into that in another video. That's not for this video. But just think of your submixes kind of like a bus. With the folder, you can't add effects on there. And all of your tracks can be routed different. So I'll just close down the submix. So track six here, I could actually have the output go to somewhere else if I wanted. And I could have track seven here be routed to somewhere else because these aren't getting routed through the folder. They're all being processed individually. So you have to put the effects on the individual tracks and still in the submix, you can put effects on the individual tracks, which you will likely do if you're using this as a drum bus because your kick's gonna get a different compression and EQ and saturation and all that stuff, and your snares and all of that will be processed different, but you can glue them all together. I know that term's overused, but you can. You can glue them all together through this bus, but you don't have to put effects on here. You can just have it as a grouping that's being routed through this. And then the output of the sub can be outputted to wherever. By default, it's just going to your master track. And that's probably typically what you're going to be using it for. But if you are somebody that likes to route individual tracks to other places, then you might want to use folders for your organization. Because once you place your tracks into the submix, your routing is not going to be there because it's now being routed to the submix. So you might be looking at the folder track and we'll just kind of put them side by side again. You might be looking at the folder track and thinking, well, there's this plus sign on the folder. Well, can I just add an effect to the folder? Technically, yes, we can add an effect to the folder, but let's watch what happens when we do that. So I'll just go back into here, waveform effects, I'll add an EQ it becomes a submix. So now your folder is no longer a folder, it's a submix. So you can add effects to a folder, but it's no longer a folder when you do that. One thing I wish would happen is when it turns it into a submix, I wish they would change this to the regular level and pan and also add the little meter on there. But of course, we can just click on this meter here hold down control, drag it up. And now we've got that there and we can do the same thing for this. Drag that up there like that and we can get rid of this one. It's really cool how this mixing section is totally modular. You can have stuff all over the place and even multiple instances of faders in there. So folders are for organization and submixes are more for processing and grouping things together that you want to maybe glue together or process together 
as a group. Now, if you're just new to Waveform or maybe you've been using it for a while and there's some little quirks that might bug you in there, there's actually some settings that are very quick and easy to change that can make your experience a lot nicer in Traction Waveform. And you can check out the video that I did on that right here. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel because I've got an actual free Traction Waveform course coming up and along with a paid one. So you'll want to check that out. Thank you so much for watching for Audio Tech TV. I'm Zane. Keep creating. Fist bump. Thumbs up.